Hi all, um, a couple of weeks ago I, I did a video on the equipment I use for landscape photography. Uh, someone had asked me uh, what sort of gear do I use um, and I thought it was a really good idea to do a video on, on my equipment. Um, but then I thought about it and as I mentioned on the uh, previous video, I, I'm splitting it into two. So I've already done the one on landscape photography, so all the kit I use for landscape photography. Uh, so this one is all about all the kit I use for wildlife photography because they're very very different types of photography So generally you're using um, different types of kit Certainly in terms of lenses and uh, sort of other accessories. So this is what this uh, week's vlog is about uh, all the kit I use at various times uh, for landscape uh, Sorry wildlife photography shoots. So we'll start with lenses actually now I'm not going to worry about cameras uh, the camera bodies because I did a vlog a few weeks back on the best camera bodies or the things to look out for in a camera body for wildlife photography. So uh, I'll put a link up above me uh, to that vlog and that covers um, what you would be looking at in terms of um, features for a wildlife camera body such as frame rate, focusing modes, um, buffer, how, much, how many uh, pictures it can recall before the buffer fills up. So all of those sort of issues uh, um, or considerations that you'd need to make when you're looking for a, a, a camera body specifically for action and wildlife photography. So that's already done. So I'm not going to go over old ground again. Um, but as I say, the link will be up on up here and you can follow that link to that vlog. So this is um, about all the other accessories. So the lenses and all the other bits of kit I use on a wildlife shoot. So we'll start with lenses. I've got basically three main lenses that I use for wildlife photography. So I've got my 200 to 500 zoom, which you will have seen on, if you've watched any of my other wildlife photography vlogs, you'll have probably seen this lens being used. I've also got my 600 millimeter prime lens. Again, that's featured in various vlogs that I've already shot. And then up down here, I've got my 300 millimeter prime lens, which is probably the one I use least of all. So, pluses and minuses for all these lenses. Let's start with the zoom lens first. I love this lens because it's a, a 200 to 500 millimeter zoom. So at the 500 millimeter zoom end, you're getting quite a big magnification. So it's great to bring those small animals uh, closer to the camera in effect. So you're zooming in on a small area uh, of that obviously location with that, piece, with that wildlife subject in it. Um, and I love the uh, ability of a zoom lens to alter the framing. So um, on my previous vlog about um, photographing foxes, and again, I'll probably put a link up here to that, I used both the 200 to 500 and the 600. Now, the reason I used the 200 to 500 as well as the 600 is because of the flexibility of framing. With my 600, sometimes the foxes were getting so close, I couldn't get all the fox in the frame, which is brilliant. But I wanted some where the fox, I, the whole fox and a bit of the landscape around it. So having the ability to zoom in and out with this lens and go tight at the 500mm lens, 500mm uh, focal length or sort of zoom out a bit so I can have a wider angle of view and get more of the animal and more of this environment is really useful. Now, the thing with uh, zoom lenses, they're not quite as sharp as a prime lens. But they are so good now that it's really hard to, uh, unless you're zooming right in and pixel peeping, it's hard to tell the difference, especially if you're not printing up, uh, making a print, a really big print. So I love this 200 to 500 zoom. It gives me all the flexibility of these different framing options um, with not a great deal of loss of sharpness compared to the primes. It is a, still a very sharp lens, so I absolutely love it. So it's got, there's pluses and minuses. You lose a little bit of sharpness and you lose a bit of lens speed and I'll come to that in a minute. But what you do gain is flexibility in able to frame up your composition. And also, because this, isn't, uh, this lens has got a maximum aperture of f5.6, it's a lot lighter and smaller than my prime lens. So we'll come on to um, lens speed now, I think. So this lens has got a maximum aperture of f5.6. So obviously the aperture uh, of the lens is a set of blades that open and close. And if you've got a small aperture, you get a small amount of light coming into the lens. If you've got a big aperture, you get a lot of light coming in. So the reason wildlife or action photographers like big aperture lenses is because it gathers a lot of light, which enables you to set fast shutter speeds, even if the light's quite low. So that's the advantages 
of a fast lens. That's what they're called, fast lenses. The only downside is those lenses end up being really big and bulky because the engineering into go, in, going into making a big wide aperture on a telephoto lens means you have to have a big front element. So this 600mm lens is massive because this is an f4 lens. So the maximum aperture on this lens is f4. Whereas the maximum aperture on this lens is f5.6. So this lens, when the aperture is wide open, lets in less light than this lens. So that means I can't set quite such a fast shutter speed with this lens as I can with this one when they're both wide open. Which, uh, when you're shooting action, is an issue. You want often the fastest shutter speed you can get, especially when the light's low. However, with uh, ISO performance of mod modern cameras now, so that high ISO performance is getting better and better. So if I'm losing some of the light coming in through this lens compared to the 600, I can increase the ISO on my camera, make my camera more sensitive to light, and that takes care of that slightly uh, less um, light gathering capabilities of this lens. Obviously, if I set a high ISO number, I do get more digital noise, but as I say, modern cameras are getting way, way better at controlling noise, so that's great. So this lens, uh, even though it's got a uh, smaller maximum aperture than my 600, it's still an f5.6 lens. That's not bad when you couple it with a modern camera with good ISO performance. So that's my 200 to 500. I use this a lot because it's flexible in framing and also a lot easier to carry around. It's much lighter than this one and less bulky. If you want optimum quality though, and you know, there's, you don't want to compromise at all, then prime lenses are the way to go. So this 600 mil, it's a slightly longer focal length, so this goes up to 500, this goes up to 600. So it gives me a little bit more reach to bring in that distant uh, wildlife. And as I say, it's an f4 maximum aperture, so it lets in a bit more light, gives me slightly faster shutter speeds than this one. And it will be sharper. It's super sharp, this lens. Prime lenses are generally sharper than zoom lenses, although the difference between the two is narrowing, or getting less. Uh, so. I love this lens, but for optimum quality, I'm going to use my 600, as long as I'm not spending the day walking around, because I find walking around all day with this lens now is really tiring. So I think that's a disadvantage. Um, the other thing is as well, the autofocus on a prime lens with a wide maximum aperture is normally a bit quicker than a zoom lens with a slightly smaller maximum aperture. So here you've got slightly more um, light gathering capabilities. You've got a faster autofocus, and you've got a slightly sharper picture. But on the minus side, it's much bigger, much bulkier, and much more expensive. So this is probably about six times the price of this lens. You know, so there are you know pluses and minuses for all these bits of kit. So that's my 600 Prime, um, but I do love this lens, and uh, I enjoy using it, um, and it will give me my optimum quality pictures. Right, okay, so my third lens, is my 300 millimeter prime lens. And again, this is a fast lens. This is a, a, a 300 millimeter f2.8. So the maximum aperture on this lens is f2.8, which is faster than my big prime and faster than my zoom. That gathers an enormous amount of light. So it's a really quick lens. I can get really fast shutter speeds in quite low light situations. The downside is though it's only 300 millimeters. And in this country, a lot of our wildlife is quite small and also quite nervous, so it means generally we're working with longer focal lengths, 500mm, 600mm. So the 300, even though it's a super sharp lens, it's super fast autofocus, um, I don't use it so much because generally the wildlife is too far away uh, for a 300. If you're shooting with something like, um, uh, you're photographing something like uh, red deer, big animals, then often the 300 is fine. Uh, excuse the noise in the background, that's a phone going off. I'm not going to stop this vlog, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so I'm just going to close the door actually so that we can't hear the answer phone going off. Okay, so the 300 is great, but it's limited in terms of focal length. So this is my, the lens that I use the least, even though it's a very good lens. Now, that brings me on to, very nicely, teleconverters, which look like this. 
So what a teleconverter does is it magnifies the focal length of your lens and they come in various um, magnifications. So both of these are 1.4 converters and this is a times two converter. So if I put this times two converter on my 300 millimeter lens, it doubles the focal length to 600 millimeters, which is great. There are downsides though, and that's the problem. If you couple this times two converter to the 300, it turns it from an f2.8 lens into an f5.6 lens, because what this does is it reduces the amount of light coming into the lens. So it makes it a slower lens. They often slow down the autofocus a little bit, uh, and they will reduce the lens sharpness a shade or a touch. Um, but again, no, they're useful things to have in your kit bag. Um, I don't like converters that much. I'll only use them if I absolutely have to. So if it's a choice of using my 300 with a times two or the 600, I would pick the 600 every time. But having said that, if I'm needing to be quite mobile, and I want the options of a fast lens for if something's quite close to me, but then photographing some wildlife that's quite a long way away, then it makes sense to have the 300 f2.8 for that really fast low light performance and just use the times two converter if I absolutely need to. Uh, so this blocks out what's called two stops of light. So it takes my f2.8 to f4 to f5.6. If I use a 1.4 converter, and this is a Nikon 1.4 here, which works really well with my 600, it reduces the amount of light coming into the lens by one stop, so that takes my f4 lens and turns it into an f5.6 lens. So again, if I use this with a converter, it would let in a, the same amount of light, wide open, as my zoom. But again, I would have a focal length of 840 millimeters, because I'm timing 600 by 1.4. So you can see how this works, they're very good. I wouldn't use these with um, anything other than a top quality lens because as I say, it reduces the AF speed and the lens sharpness. So that's converters. Um, as I say, I don't particularly like them, but I will use them on some occasions. Lens is dealt with now though. So my three main lenses, 200 to 500 zoom, 600 millimeter prime, 300 millimeter prime, 1.4 times two converters. Okay, so that's my main kit, along with my camera body. I normally couple these lenses up with my D, Nikon D500, which is a great wildlife body. But as I say, I've already done a, uh, a vlog on uh, camera bodies for wildlife photography. So if you um, have a look at that vlog, that gives you all the information you'll need on camera bodies. So that brings us on to um, accessories. And I've got a few here. So first of all, I've got a bean bag, which is great if you're in a, uh, a quite a solid hide because you can rest this on the edge of the hide you put your lens on the top and it does give you a very very solid uh, stable base because the trouble with uh, shooting with long lenses is it's mag a long lens magnifies camera shape so if you look for a long lens any little movement that lens is magnified and it really shakes your subject around so you need a very fast shutter speed to avoid camera shake and some sort of stability like a bean bag or in a minute we'll look at the tripod, that reduces camera shake as well. So very useful, Does, don't cost much. This one, they come empty normally, this is filled with uh, polystyrene, uh, little polystyrene balls, which is very nice and light. I used to have it filled with rice, but that was dead heavy. Obviously you've got a snack with you, you've got a bag full of rice, but rice is a lot heavier than polystyrene, so that's what I suggest filling your bean bag with. Um, rain covers, so if you're shooting in, rainy there's no reason to stop shooting wildlife or photographing wildlife because uh, the wildlife will be out searching for food um, defending their territory depending on the time of year so they're not going to stop doing what they're doing generally because of the rain there are some species that won't come out in the rain uh, barn owls they don't hunt in the rain because the noise of the rain stops their hearing from working properly and they can't locate their prey um, small reed type birds like bearded tits and stuff like that they don't come out when it's really uh, windy or rainy um, so not every wildlife subject will be out and about in the rain but lots are these rain covers totally protect your camera now my camera body and my lenses are weather sealed so i should be able to shoot in the rain anyway but i'm not going to take that risk this is a really good quality rain cover really keeps the rain off i also use it on the beach to stay to stop the sand getting into my sort of camera gear because sand is a nightmare for camera gear. So rain cover, definitely worth the investment. 
Then I have um, this sort of poncho, which is like, it's basically like a, um, a bag hide really, but that literally just, it's a camouflage poncho, you just pop it over your body and that breaks up your eye outline. And I've used this when I was photographing um, Great Crested Greaves, which I also, also shot a vlog on. Um, I maybe try and get a link and put it up on this video as well. And this just completely camouflaged me. The Great Crested Greaves didn't know I was there and they're really nervous birds generally. So these work really well. And again, they're small and light. They just fold up really tight into your camera bag. So that's great. So that's my, uh, my uh, poncho. And then I also occasionally will use, which I've got on this chair over here, I'll just go and get it, a, a proper sort of hide. Now I'm not gonna bother taking it out, but it's just basically like a, it's just, I won't bother getting it out as I say, but it's just basically like a pop-up tent. And it's a camouflage hide, which again gives you a bit more comfort than just sticking a sort of um, a cloth over your head. Uh, and this is great for if you're going to be in situation or in, in location for a long time. But again, much bigger and heavier to carry. So you don't want to be walking around with one of these all day. So it's horses and courses. These are really portable, but less comfortable when you're in position. These are less portable, but way more comfortable. So that's the bag. Uh, that's the, um, the portable hide. And now, this is uh, an essential piece of kit. So it's my tripod with my Manfrotto head. So this is um, the Manfrotto head and it's like a U-shaped bracket, don't know if you can see that. But the beauty of this is it rotates up and down and side to side. So it gives you really free movement. So you can pan um, the movement of an animal. So if you've got a bird flying across your sight of view, it's very easy to pan with this, um, this head. And if you need to tilt it up and down, it tilts up and down as well. So you've got free movement, but stability. And I tell you, if you're using a 600 millimeter lens like that one, they're really heavy. You can't hand hold them for very long. So having a tripod with a, a, some sort of head like this or a gimbal head, which is like an L-shaped bracket that gives you free movement as well, is really, really important. There's no way I can hold that for more than a couple of minutes. And even then your arms are shaking a bit. So. This is a great, great addition. It's worth every penny. Um, they come in all ranges of shapes and sizes and, uh, and prices. Uh, I think this is a good compromise, but there's lots of makes on the market. And incidentally, um, as I was said on my first uh, equipment vlog, I'm a Nikon user, so all the stuff here is Nikon kit, but every camera manufacturer has got their own versions of these lenses. There's lots of different tripod manufacturers. They've all got gimbal heads. So uh, I'm not recommending any make here. I'm just saying these are the focal lengths I use and this is the sort of kit I use. But I'm not uh, saying that Canon, Sony, who knows it? You know, who, who knows? All of those, they've all got great uh, lenses. They've got great cameras. So you don't need to stick to obviously a particular make. But gimbal head, really important. And then, um, Really, that's probably about it. Apart from, I've also got this um, this roll-out mat, camouflage mat. If you're laying on the ground in the mud, this is really useful. It stops you getting too muddy. I used this again when I was photographing the Great Crested Greaves. I still ended up getting muddy, but not quite as muddy as I would have been. Uh, and I think that's it. Um, apart from one really, really important accessory that is dead easy to forget, and that is spare batteries. Now this is the battery uh, for my vlogging camera actually, but I've got spare batteries for all of my cameras. There's nothing worse than running out of juice when you're uh, on a shoot. Right then, I hope this uh, video has been useful. Uh, slightly different to most of my vlogs, uh, which are op lots of them are location based, me out and about, photographing wildlife or uh, photographing landscapes. But I thought it was a really good idea just to go through the equipment I use, both for landscape photography on my first equipment vlog, and in this case, a wildlife photography. As I say, there's lots of makes and uh, manufacturers making all sorts of great kit. So this is just the stuff I use. Uh, and I use it on a regular basis. I've not been uh, given any of this equipment. I've bought it all myself, so, and I'm not being paid to recommend any of it. It's just my kit that I use. Um, and I find, as I say, um, some of it I use more often than, than others. Uh, my 200 to 500 are used enormous amounts. My 600 I use quite a bit too. And all the other accessories I use at various times. 
Uh, yeah, so if you have enjoyed this um, this video and you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you can consider subscribing, that would be great. And if you do subscribe, press the little bell icon and you'll be notified when my next video is uploaded. Uh, you can give it a like as well if you have enjoyed it, that would be brilliant. Um, yep, yeah, so thanks very much as always for watching and listening guys and uh, I'll speak to you next time. So uh, yeah, bye for now.